Oracle Mobile Cloud Service comes with a specific mobile client SDK for the Android platform to make your task or the mobile developer's task of working with MCS and the platform APIs easier. In this episode, we'll show you how to load and configure the MCS mobile client SDK in an Android application and make a very basic authentication call to MCS so you know the SDK is correctly configured. I'm Chris Muir. Thanks for joining me. I'm from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. As we discussed in previous episodes, MCS provides a number of pre-built platform APIs such as push notification, storage and data synchronization. While all these APIs can be accessed via REST services externally by your mobile application or any other application, MCS provides a native client SDK for Android to make working with the APIs much simpler. In many cases, reducing say 20 or 30 raw REST calls or code lines down to just three or four. For this specific episode, we're going to investigate in detail the steps, as you can see here, needed to prepare your Android application to use the MCS SDK. In saying this, setting up and calling a specific platform API and calling it an MCS, such as push notifications, will be left to later episodes. For now, we just want to focus on the bare minimum in terms of steps to get you running in Android with MCS. So first of all, you will need an actual Android mobile app source code to work on, kind of stands to reason, hey? Now you're free to work on an app in your Android development tool of choice, such as the Android SDK and Eclipse or Android Studio, for example. Now, if you don't actually have an Android app source code to work with because you're just starting out, that's convenient because the MCS user interface allows you to download a quick start Android app with the MCS mobile client SDK and required configuration files already installed. For the purposes of this demo, let's say we don't have this luxury and we're going to work with an existing Android app. I'll just quickly create a demo app with a single login activity using Android Studio's wizards. So here I'll create a simple app called MCS Demo. And we will allow the wizard to create a simple login activity for us. To keep this simple, we won't provide services to log in to Google+. And as a result, we can see our rudimentary app here in Android Studio. If I open the activity login XML file, which represents the same name page, you can see a login page which nearly fits our purposes for demonstration. For the purposes of the demo here, let's change the email field so it says username instead, as the MCS user we're set up doesn't use email addresses, rather just plain old account names. And in the relating activity login Java class that was created for us, Let's modify the attempt login method that undertakes the login once the user has entered their credentials by removing the validation calls that check for a non-null email address and password, as well as a well-formed email address before making the actual remote authentication call. By removing these for demo purposes, this will make our test here a little easier to understand, though you can keep and modify this code being wary of the various validation rules you need to satisfy. Okay, so we're going to use this Android app going forward to explain the rest of the steps. Now I encourage you to stop the video at this point and do create the same app looking through the generated code so you get a feel for what Android Studio created for me or for you, so to speak. In detail, have a look at the activity on create and attempt login methods as we'll work with these in detail in a moment. Before we continue modifying the Android app, we need to register against the mobile backend in MCS. You do this by accessing the MCS mobile backend in the MCS user interface, selecting the settings page, and then either modifying the client application that was created by you by default when the MBE was created, or creating a new one. We'll create a new one so you get to see the process. So we select the register another application link. And once the dialog displays, in that resulting dialog, we select Android. From here, we type in the application name, we'll use MCS Demo, as well as the full package name for the application.
The API key field that you can see here is required for push notifications and that will be covered in a later episode. So we'll just skip this for now and select register. Once done, you'll see the new application registered against the mobile backend, as well as an application key generated by MCS. Above that, you will see the base URL, the mobile backend ID and an anonymous key. You will need all of these values a little later on, so don't close your browser window. Once we've configured the MCS mobile backend, we next need to download and install the mobile SDK from the MCS user interface. The SDK file named MCS Android SDK with a version number .zip contains the MCS mobile client SDK, libraries, code and configuration files we want to extend our Android app to make calling MCS relatively simple. So once you've downloaded this file, you should unzip it onto your desktop or wherever you want to on your local PC. In the newly extracted directory, it will expose several jar files, a zip file and MCS configuration files. Within the new directory, locate and unzip the rdmmobilesdk.zip file 2, which will create a subdirectory of the same name. Then, from the base directory, copy all the jars to your Android app's app libs directory. Returning to Android Studio, you can then see the available libraries you just copied into the libs directory. The libs directory at minimum should contain the following jars. The fact that there are multiple libraries will give you a little clue that you don't necessarily need to include all the jars. However, in saying this, there are some minimum requirements, and they are that you must include the Oracle Cloud Mobile Share jar and the IDM Mobile SDK jar. From there, if you want to use the Oracle Cloud Mobile Storage jar, you must also include the OPC Sync Client Android jar, but the reverse isn't necessarily true. Conversely, if you choose not to use the client-side analytics or push notification services, for example, then you can delete the Oracle Cloud Mobile Analytics and Oracle Cloud Mobile Notifications jar. And ultimately, the advantage being your final deployed application will be smaller. Oh, thank goodness I got all those words out. Returning to Android Studio, assuming you want to take all the libraries, note the entry, compile file tree, includes startup jar and directory libs in the app build gradle file. This will automatically load all the jars. If you don't want to include one of the jars, you must delete it from the directory. Otherwise, you must modify that compile file tree option because the startup jar will try to load everything that's in that directory. Finally, we also need to add the contents from the IDM Mobile SDK directory you also extracted. In Android Studio, select File Import Module and select the IDM Module SDK folder where you extracted it from onto your file system. Be careful not to select the zip file instead. Once done, you can see in Android Studio that it undertakes an automatic sync of all the new libraries and code, and you will see a new subfolder RDM Mobile SDK in the application source. However, the automatic sync here is a little premature as we need to return to the build greater file and add the RDM Mobile SDK as a dependency. From here, we can kick off the Gradle sync again. If you get a build error stating you need to download API 19, follow the necessary links to complete this so Android Studio can download the required API version. Having installed the jars, the next set of steps requires you to configure two XML files. The first is a proprietary XML file for the MCS client SDK called Oracle Mobile Cloud Config.xml. This configuration file carries all sorts of identifiers that tells the MCS client SDK, for example, what mobile backend and version it's working with. Because of this, the Oracle Mobile Cloud Config XML file is mandatory. An example Oracle Mobile Cloud Config file can be found in the downloaded MCS Mobile Client SDK, and typically you would place it in your Android application's app source main assets directory, creating the assets directory if it does not already exist. 
once we've done this we need to then open and modify this file potentially in android studio with various settings as you can see there is a mobile backend name a mobile backend version an app key a base url a mobile backend id and so on so where do most of these values come from well like as we discussed they all come from the mobile backend page in the MCS user interface. Now I'll cheat for the purposes of this video and just copy in the completed set of values I prepared earlier. You might like to stop the video quickly and just have a look at what I'm doing. It's worth noting that an application can make use of multiple MCS mobile backends and as such that's why it's necessary to have the default flag set to true for one of the mobile backends specified in this file. Having completed editing the Oracle Mobile Cloud config XML file, the next configuration file to modify in your Android application is the well-known Android Manifest XML file where you must add some additional permissions. For the MCS client SDK to access your remote MCS instance, you must add the internet and access network state permissions. In addition, if you choose to include MCS analytics, you must also enable location-based permissions, access find location and access course location. Having completed all these steps, you've actually completed all that is necessary to configure your Android's application source code to use the MCS mobile client SDK. Well done. From here, your primary focus is now making use of the MCS Mobile Client SDK native code or APIs in your application. So one typical first call to the MCS Client SDK is when a mobile user logs into the mobile application. You may wish to authenticate that mobile user against the mobile users stored in an associated MCS mobile backend realm using the SDK's User Management Services API or UMS API for short. So this is awfully handy because when we created the Android app previously, remember, we created a default login activity. Returning to the login activity class, we can see the email sign in button in the onCreate method adds an onClick listener, which in turn calls the attempt login method. If we go to the declaration of the attempt login method, now let's override how it authenticates the user by authenticating against our MCS server. Right at the end of this method is the actual call to existing authentication code for demo purposes, created by the Android wizard, which we're going to override. Let's override this code with the MCS equivalent, and then import the relevant classes. All right, let's explain the code a little. As you can see in this code, what it first does is obtain a mobile backend manager which gives access to the default mobile backend we configured in the Oracle Mobile Cloud config file earlier. From there, we can get access to the MCS authorization agent and call the authenticate method, passing in username, password, and an asynchronous callback class. Now, you define the callback class as follows, implementing the onCompletion method enforced by the interface that allows you to then handle either the successful or unsuccessful login attempt of the user. Finally, if we run this application and enter a valid username and password combo, we can see the login success log message from the on completion code. And if we enter an invalid username and password combination, we can see the invalid password message raised. All right, now we're really done, or well, we're as done as we're gonna be for this video. So once you've configured your Android application with the MCS client SDK, you're of course ready to call any of the provided and platform APIs that, well, of course, that you've configured in the MCS side. So in the latter episodes, we're going to look at those platform APIs, not only what they do, but how you call them from the MCS mobile client SDK. And that's where the real work starts to start for you mobile developers out there. Highly encourage you to check out those videos now because you'll start to see the real worth of the MCS platform. Thanks for joining us.